Hello members of the internet and welcome to a computer overview where today we're going to be looking at the IBM IntelliStation M Pro uh, model 6229-12U Yeah, that's pretty uh, that's a pretty long uh, model name but anyways whatever um, basically I got this machine before it was sent to be recycled and uh, you know what let's uh, check out the clip when I got it my 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 look what I just dragged out of the car picked this up Friday never had a chance to uh, get to it it's an IBM IntelliStation M Pro uh, it's designed for Windows 2000 um, looks like a Pentium 4 machine that thing ain't fresh stuff <laughs> that's dead stuff holy crap look at the dust <laughs> yeah um Pride of ownership? I'll give it a 0 out of 10. <laughs> um, stuff's loose inside, so I don't know what's going to crawl out of there. Uh, you just pop out, you just pop it out, just open the tab, you just press the blue thing, and it should, should just pop right out. There you go. Now uh, it's Windows 2000. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Ram bus. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, um... Looks like I found the video card, and the, oh fuck no! I don't have the uh, cable for that. I think it's I don't exactly know the adapter name. I forgot about it, but it's the asshole adapter. I'll call it. Um, there's the toolless design. Uh, looks like we have a sound card, a metal bracket. Ah, uh, wow. Uh. Yeah, it sounds like a rebranded Intel uh, board. Bet you anything, if that's a Pentium 4, I don't know, socket 423. It does look like it's a 478, though. Uh, the heatsink really shows. Let's see how much memory is in there. I think they're all the same. Uh, 128 megs. Yeah, it's approved by IBM. Yeah, that is dead stuff. Let's uh, check out the hard drive. Oh my goodness, that's a Seagate Barracuda. What the hell is that? <sighs> Give me a minute. 40 gigabytes. It's got a floppy, CD-ROM, and dust galore. I still find some... Oh, this is going to be fun. Bet you that thing's dead. <laughs> if that thing fires up, it's a pretty... Pretty nice miracle. <laughs> Anyways, compressor's fired up. Let's get cleaning. Alright. Much cleaner, eh? Uh, that thing was so dusty. Look at my shirt. Ugh. I still have remnants of dust. Well, I was dusting it. I kind of scratched the back. Damn it. Oh well, not a big deal. It's not like it's going to see a resale value anytime soon. <sighs> AGP Pro, a couple PCI, an artifact there for another one. Oh well, we'll, we'll see that in the, in the overview anyways. Oh man, what a pain in the ass. At least I'm happy to see that there's bag. There's the bag there for another hard drive bracket. Oh well, there's two brackets, so another hard drive will do fine. And yeah, here's a chassis intrusion. Well, yeah, let's see if this bitch will fire up. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. Do we have life? Um. Oh, yeah, anyways. Come on. Oh! Oh, ho, ho, it works. Oh, that's good. Oh, I must have had the XP. Hmm. Hold on a minute. Hard to believe stuck in a lot of dust yet it still works this is insane it kind of takes a while though I seem to have focusing issues uh, since uh, oh I think we have problems and <laughs> lots of it <laughs> all right well let's see if uh, the best password ever is going to work yep yeah, um, not genuine. 
Yeah, um, we'll resolve that later. As in never. Holy crap. Oh well. At least it works, so... We're gonna be doing an overview on this machine and we're gonna actually do a test drive on that. I don't think I'll start this operating system because it's really... I don't know. It's Russian. Yeah, you can kind of see it was a uh, eh, unique experience. <laughs> Anyways, let's begin. Um, at the front, we have a CD drive and a floppy drive, and two USB at the front. There's supposed to be a door right here. Unfortunately, this one, well, is a doorless wonder. And the front right here, you open this up, and we have the dust filter, dust shutter, and it's still a little dirty, but... That's as best as it's going to get, really. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You get a more direct access for your hard drive cooling, and I don't know why they didn't do that there, or they, whatever. I guess you can add a fan over here. It looks like it anyways. So then you, all you have to do is just put that back in like so. Just slide it like a door. And, come on. Look what I've done. Um, in order to get inside, this is what we gotta do. Right here. Ugh. It's a pretty, uh, pretty solid beast, and um, it is a. Uh, oh, how can I say that? It's a workstation machine, and uh, it's not designed to be moved <laughs> every day. But anyways, here we have a little blue tab here with an arrow pointing this way. All you have to do is just press on that little blue tab and then you open it up like a door hinge and all you have to do is get it open like you just ah oh, come on there you go you just open it up like a as if you'd open a can of coke and here's the inside let's take a closer look now to begin with we're blocked off by, by this nice metal bracket and over here is a little tab I believe you just pry this open, uh, is it, or just, no, oh, okay, you pry, you just pop it open from the back and out it comes. Now on the inside, shit's pretty busy, we have uh, four RAM boss slots and they're all occupied by 128 megs of RAM, we have our socket 478 uh, Pentium 4 in there, I think it's 2 gigahertz, down there we have an exhaust fan. Here's our power supply. This is a... oh, what is this? How many watts? Two... Oh wait. 340 watts. That's plenty of power, I guess. We have a Sound Blaster Live sound card, which was, I believe, was added later on because we have onboard on that machine. And we had the video card there with the... I believe it's called the DDS-59 connector. But I popped in a GeForce 4, you know, to have, like, an actual video card that I can use. And, yeah, that's pretty much it on this side. On this side, we have two ID channels right here, and a floppy, uh, control, well, floppy connector right there. And I believe this is powered by the Intel 860 chipset. Now, over here, we can have up to three hard drives, and thankfully, the bag, I thought, was, uh, including, uh, two brackets, but in... Total, actually there is four, so that's enough to fill up the three hard drives that's in there. One of them is already being used. At the top we have expansion for another optical drive, and at the bottom here we have an expansion for another three and a half expansion, whatever, like a floppy drive or multi-in-one reader. Okay, as for expansion, we have one AGP Pro, one, two, three, four, five PCI expansion bays. At the bottom here, can you see it? I think you can barely see it. This is an artifact for a 6th PCI expansion and another one there for an AMR CNR slot right there which is basically mainly used for modems. There's the header for the USB at the front. I believe they're 1.1 and this is the front panel connector, the lights and the power button and this thing for here is the chassis intrusion which is right here. 
And at long last, this looks like it could have been used for another fan or something. Not quite sure. If you guys know, let me know. <laughs> but it looks like it was. It could be used for a fan. You just gotta pop it out or something. I'm not gonna be bothered by that, like at all. All right. So this seems to be uh, coming from Concordia University. Hmm. Huh. Well, what do you know? Anyways, um, there's the COA sticker. Who bloody cares? If you want to have it, take it. I'm not you going to use it. So anyways, that's for the ports. We have a PS2 for the keyboard and mouse. Two USB ports right here. Two serial ports. Parallel port. And onboard Ethernet port. Um, where's my two USB? No. I guess that's all we get. That's odd. Okay. And your onboard audio right here, and these are the connectors for uh, <laughs> the video card and the sound card. And because this thing has no onboard video, you will need a uh, graphics card. You folks may not see it properly, but behind this shield, there is two extra USB ports. Clever bitch. So, before we go for a test drive, I have to put this thing back in which swivels right back down and you just place it in place <laughs> you just give it a nice little smack and everything should be fine so let's get the benchmarks and see what kind of chipset is in there I'm pretty sure it's an 860 all right let's give it a little turn on and there we go well, let's get this uh, get into the BIOS and see make sure everything's all set for the boot uh, yeah, the one thing I haven't checked is the CD drive. Does it work? Oh boy. Okay, now it's complaining. That's a 2 gigahertz, 400 megahertz spanning 4, so that's a Willamette. And of course, it takes ECC. You can have the option of non ECC. Oh, the bastard takes the date, so I mean, I got a good CMOS battery. PC800, which basically is like DDR400, 400, 400 megahertz. You divide that by half. Don't let the fools and don't let the looks fool you. But since it's PC800, I think we got a one-to-one -one ratio processor to C processor to CPU. I mean, no, processor to memory. Uh, we have a plug-and-play operating system. Come on. Uh, is everything fine here? Oh, I'm gonna have that enabled. Um, ID configuration. It's fine. Everything there is fine. Diskette configuration. Well, that's that's odd. Normally it's in main, but whatever. Uh, an event log. Okay. What did we have? A keyboard non-function. Wow, that's a lot of keyboards. Keyboard controller not functional. Huh. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay, we'll mark that as red. And we'll uh, clear it. I hope <laughs> I hope something's not horribly wrong with it. Not that I'm going to use it, anyways. Oh, no, 128. It's 64256. I'll leave it as is. Um, power, everything's fine. The quiet boot, which is the IBM, uh, uh, the IBM logo. If not, it's a Phoenix BIOS, I believe, or it's a Word Phoenix together. I. I don't know, I'm not sure. Oh, you can have USB boot, you can just enable it. Scan user flash data. Typical. Boot device priority. Uh, I want the CD-ROM first before the hard drive. See? It's always good to look uh, to look and make sure everything looks fine. And with all this, with all uh, with all that said and done, oh, let's test the CD-ROM drive. Oh boy. It's a little dusty tray. Hope it works. And I think it does. Maybe? I don't know. Oh, it's an 850. It's an Intel D850. That's what I thought. It is a rebranded Intel board. So I'm using DLCD as a diagnostics and testing for any computers that I have. And it's always good because it comes with mini Windows XP and 7. And it also has the uh, higher end's uh, boot CD uh, features as well. So I'm going to go ahead and boot into that, and uh, we'll see you in a bit. Well, after a good 15 minutes 
of fiddling because the thing was so slow, I finally got it started. Uh, I think a Pentium 3 can actually outperform this. But anyways, this is the CPU like I said, and I was right. The ratio is 1 to 1. That's nice to have. But it's still slow. <laughs> so anyways, we have the Intel... Um, yeah, that's it. It's an Intel D850 MV, so that's what I thought. It was a rebranded machine. Oh, it's American Megatrends. That's odd. It looks a lot different. Uh, whatever. Whatever. And video adapter. It is a GeForce 4 MX4000. Not too surprised. It is the Asus V94 Magic if you're looking for the uh, specific uh, brand. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, it's the Pro 100. Blah blah blah. So now it's time for some benchmarks. So I want to do everything but the hard drive. Let's do this. Okay, well, uh, the results are not too bad. Let's hit compare on the memory. And, uh, whoa. Okay, uh, where am I? Oh, I'm right here. Okay. Uh, ironically, this thing performs better than the, with the AIM than, uh, well, memory anyways. It does better than the AIM, the Turion 64. Okay, even Opterons? Ah, uh, Transmatic Ruzoi, not too surprised. But, <laughs> uh, even the Phenom? What? It does worse than a... Okay, well, it could be biased, or it could be wrong, but anyways, I am way down that line. <laughs> yep, I'm not going to be bothered by that too much. But that's the uh, specific, that's the benchmark results. So, not too shabby, not too fast. But it's an Intellistation M Pro, and it's a workstation machine. So, let's wrap things up. So there we have it, this is the IBM Intellistation M Pro 6229-12U, we'll just call it 6229 really. <laughs> um, for its time I think it was a uh, pretty uh, expensive machine, but for today's standards, nah, nah, this thing, it runs, but with RAM bus you're limited to what you have, I mean I have a couple sticks of 256, but with the Willamette, the Willamette CPU really is lagging behind. And it's not a computer I would uh, technically see running today. Unless it's like for specific very lightweight stuff or very office-y stuff. But other than that, if you want to use this for a main machine, yikes. Unless you could, you could probably end up, you know, you could get away with uh, making it a custom build. That's possible because of the uh, USB header being the same, but you're going to have to uh, mess up with the uh, power and button, uh, well, power LEDs and the button, so. So if you have any questions, comments, anything I've overlooked or not looked at, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, there is my Twitter link, yeah, my Twitter account link in the description as well, so you can, you know, keep track of what I'm going to be doing and uh, what's, coming, what's coming up next, you know, you never know. So it's always good to uh, keep a look at that. So, with all that said and done, until next time, take care.